Hello guys, welcome to a new video and in this new video for the CCNA security exam we are going to go over uh, section number four um, for securing and routing and switching and we are actually going to go over the securing the control plane and what we're going to explain is the, fun the function of control plane policing. Uh, so let's go ahead and open this uh, PowerPoint that I have already here uh, for you guys. So what is control plane policing? Um, and also, before I forget, uh, after I'm done with this, the, with the control plane PowerPoint, um, I'm going to go over also the VLAN security um, and implementations. And we are going to describe the security implementations of the private VLAN and also the security impl implications, not implementations, implications of a native, native, native VLAN. Okay, so we're going to go over the control plane policing, private VLAN, and the native native VLAN. So let's go ahead and start. Um, what is the control plane policing? Well, um, the COPP is a Cisco IOS feature designed to allow admin to specify controls over traffic that is directed to uh, devices control plane. The goal is to prevent low priority or unnecessary traffic from overwhelming system resources, which could lead to issues in the system performance. So the COPP treats the control plane as a separate entity with its own ingress and egress port. The COPP facilitates definition of rules to control traffic traversing the control plane's ingress and egress ports. And the COPP is implemented using the Cisco IOS model, Modular um, Quality of Service CLI or MQC, which is a highly flexible framework that allows users to create and attach traffic policies to interfaces. And the MQC mechanisms are used by COPP to define the classification of policing description for its policies. In this way, in addition to the limited permits and deny actions associated with simple ACLs, a specific packets may be permitted but rate limited when using the MQC structure. Uh, so the control plane policing is whenever, um, let's say that you want to like limit traffic um, if you see that you're getting a lot of traffic that are not really that valuable, what you could do is you can limit that traffic and let through uh, traffic that are really, really important. Um, let's say like ping traffic, like ICMP traffic, uh, you could just like lower the rate in that. So then the traffic that is really important can go through. So that's what you could do with the control plane policing. We are not going to configure it because it's not in the CCNA security exam topics. All we have to do is just describe it and know how it works and um, and how it works and how uh, the word to use it in the Cisco iOS. Okay, so we are moving on. So now we're going to talk about the PVLAN, which is, stands for private um, VLAN. And it is possible to simplify a multi VLAN and subnet deployment by using the private VLAN um, or PVLAN feature. Private VLANs provide layer two isolation between ports within the same VLAN. For a service prov provider, this isolation eliminates the need for a separate VLAN and IP subnet per customer. So you can save on VLANs. Uh, you need to keep creating new VLANs or IPs. You, you, you don't you don't have to assign a bunch of new IP subnet as well. So the uh, the internet service provider can um, save a lot of IPs and VLANs and resources in their um, switches or routers. And with private VLANs, a common subnet is subdivided into multiple private VLANs. Communication between hosts is controlled by whether their switch port is configured as isolated, right? So that those, these are the configurations that you could do for private VLANs. One is isolated, one is community, or the other one is pro promiscuous. Um, and the advantage of using private VLAN is that it simplifies traffic management while conserving IP addresses, while conserving IP addresses space and also um, VLANs. And here are the different um, private VLAN port. And the first one is isolated. So isolated are access ports that are assigned to an isolated VLAN. An isolated port has complete layer two separation from other ports within the same private VLAN, um, except from the promiscuous port. 
because the promiscuous port is uh, is a port where all the traffic needs to go through. So power VLANs block all traffic to isolated ports except the traffic from promiscuous pro, promiscuous port, ports. Um, I cannot say that word at all. Traffic that is received from an isolated port is forwarded only to promiscuous port, ports. Like I said, promiscuous ports. Um, so isolated, like I said, isolated can cannot go to another isolated private VLAN. They can only go to promiscuous ports. So isolated to isolated, you cannot do that. But you can do isolated to promiscuous ports. You are, you, you, you can do that. Uh, so promiscuous ports, what are those? Those are also access ports that are assigned to a primary VLAN and typically connect to all router to a router or a firewall. So it is basically like the default gateway. A promiscuous port can communicate with all ports within the private VLAN, including the community and isolated ports. Like I said, the isolated is able to communicate with a promiscuous port. Um, the default gateway for this segment will likely be hosted on a promiscuous port, given that all devices in the private VLAN need to communicate um, with that port. And we also have the community port. So our act community ports or private VLANs are access ports that are assigned to a community VLAN. Community ports communicate among themselves, so they're able to communicate um, community to community and with the promiscuous ports as well. So they are able to communicate with each other and also with the prom promiscuous ports. These interfaces are isolated at layer two from all other interfaces in other communi communities or in isolated ports within their private VLAN. So they are able to communicate with each other, but they are not able to communicate with the isolated VLAN. The only, um, the only way that an isolated v the only um, port that the isolated VLAN is able to communicate is with the promiscuous ports. Community are able to communicate with their own community and also with the promiscuous ports. The promiscuous ports are able to communicate with their with themselves and, and the isolated VLAN and also the community um, VLAN, private VLAN. And as you can see, this is how uh, a private VLAN topology, how it should or probably looks. Um, as you can see right here, there's an isolated VLAN and then on VLAN 101 and then there's another isolated VLAN on VLAN 101 and as you can see right here the two these two isolated VLANs are not able to communicate with each other but they are able to communicate with a promiscuous port uh, and then we have the community VLAN you see that they are combined together because that means that they are able to communicate with each other and they are also able to communicate with a promiscuous port and as you can see right here you can see that this link are attached so the two VLANs are attached so they have communication but with the isolated you see that the interface or the link right here um, you see right here they're not attached so they're not able to communicate with each other so now moving on um, we have the native VLAN and the IEEE 802.Q protocol allows operating between equipment from different vendors all frames except the native VLAN frames are equipped with a tag when traversing the link the native VLAN is configured on each end of an 802.Q 802.1Q trunk must be the same. Okay, so if you have a, we have two switches and they are connected with each other, um, both of them needs to have the same native VLAN, right? So if on this side is VLAN 100, then on this side needs to be VLAN 100, otherwise it's going to give you a native VLAN mismatch. Okay, so our frame is a frame that is sent in VLAN 1 on one side will receive on VLAN 2 on the other. VLAN 1 and VLAN 2 have been segmented and merged. There is no reason they should be required and connectivity issues will occur will occur in the network. Like I said, they need to be in the same VLAN. The two native VLANs, the, the native VLAN needs to be in the same VLAN number. And by default, the native VLAN will be on VLAN 1 for the purpose of security, the native VLAN on a trunk should be set to a specific VLAN identifier that is not used for normal operations elsewhere on the network using the switchboard trunk native VLAN command. So um, for security measures, the, the first thing or one of the things that you should do on the switch is that you need to change the native VLAN from VLAN 1 because 
um, as soon as you turn on the the switch by default uh, the native VLAN is going to be in VLAN 1 and guess what everybody knows that so what you need to do is um, create a, a you can create a VLAN that you're not going to be using for data or anything like that and you can set that to the native VLAN just you just have to make sure that you set the native VLAN um, the same VLAN number for all the switches that are going to be communicating with each other because otherwise you are going to get a VLAN mismatch error and you don't want that to happen because that could cause a lot of problems and here's how you can uh, mitigate the native VLAN attack um, so there are several other mechanisms or best practices to minimize authorized access to trunk ports and switch spoofing including the following so what you could do is you can manually configure access ports with the same with the switch port mode access command. Um, you could also shut down or use interfaces and place them in a parking lot, as you can say, a parking lot. So you can just shut it down and just leave it parked there because you're not using it. So you don't want to, you don't want a hacker to just plug into a switch and just perform a, um, a spoofing attack or anything like that, or a root um, spoofing attack, right? Um, so you want to shut down unused interfaces and the other one is restrict VLANs on trunk ports with this switch port trunk allow VLANs so if you're only going to allow VLAN one or let's say not one let's say I not use one because that's not good um, two all the way to five you can just do a switch port trunk allow VLAN two to five and that way it's only going to allow those um, VLANs and then the rest is going to be um, rejected so it's not going to allow any other VLANs um, and also you can change the native VLAN from VLAN to an unused VLAN with a switch port trunk native VLAN and you can put like VLAN 99 and don't use it to send any data just leave it there for nothing um, and just you can set up with a switch port trunk native VLAN and you have to make sure that you do it for all the switches that are going to be connected they need to be on the same native VLAN and the native VLAN needs to match between the two connected switch like I said right here, just a friendly reminder, um, just to remember that. Okay, guys, so this is it. Look at that. This is it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoy this video. We went over um, the security, securing the control plane. So I explained the function of control plane policing. We also went over the VLAN security. So we described the security implications of VLAN and private VLAN. And we also described the security implications of a native VLAN. So, thank you guys for watching. And if you guys have a Twitter account, hey, if you guys have a Twitter account, go ahead and follow your boy at CCNA Daily Tips here on Twitter. And if you don't have a Twitter account, go ahead and create a Twitter account. Um, it's free. If you have an if you have an email, everybody has an email. You can just go ahead and create an email and follow me at CCNA Daily Tips where I post all my stuff here. And thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.